This video is sponsored by Yellow Images. More about them later when we use their cool stuff. Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you about using layer maps to create depth or the illusion of depth in your motion design. That's maps with a P, like the pieces of paper that help get us places. The core concept behind all the things that we're gonna look at here is using the color information of an image to guide the direction or displacement of pixels, particles, and vertices. An image will literally be telling things where to go. Layer maps can be used for many things, but using them for depth can be a really good entry point into this concept. We're gonna start our work in regular out-of-the-box After Effects. Then we're gonna look at an advanced third-party particle system called Plexus that makes great use of layer maps for depth, but the same concepts and methods will apply to most advanced particle systems. And then finally, we'll be cracking into Cinema 4D to have a look at how 3D programs can use image data to deform geometry. If you have any questions about what you see, let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you through. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any new tutorials when they come up around here. Now, please follow along as I try to guide you in our first steps into layer maps. As promised, first we're going to look at a basic After Effects only method that we can use to create the illusion of depth from an image. Here's a really fantastic photo of some inky paint smears. To really up the strangeness of the image, what if we could turn this into something that would feel like it's 3D topography? That's fairly easy using something called a displacement map. Just as a quick simplified example to see what's gonna be happening under the hood, I'm gonna take this layer already covered in a grid and apply the displacement map over it. Then I'll use this gradient layer that has dark values and light values and gray values in the middle as the map. And as I adjust the horizontal displacement amount, you can see the gradient serves as those instructions for where pixels should go and by how much. We can have a little bit of nuance over which color channel we're gonna use from that image and in what direction and how the map lines up, but this is the general theory that we want to remember throughout the entire video. Maps are just a set of instructions that we use to have one layer impact another in specific ways, and the map shows how much of a change will be applied to which areas. So back to this specific first example, I have the ink and we're going to displace it with a map that is that layer itself. Since this image has bright and dark spots, we can now see that those spots are being pushed around when we slide the horizontal and vertical numbers. I'm gonna set some expressions on those numbers just to have them in continual motion using math.sine and math.cos for sine and cosine waves respectively. You might use keyframes, you might have other specific movements you wanna see happening. I'm just doing this so we have some movement that we can observe as we dial in other changes. If you wanna copy and paste the specific expressions that you see here, just grab them from the description. They aren't the focus, so let's move on. The point here is that we wanna look at how this image is shifting and distorting. And in this case, it's a little bit harsh and it breaks up and tears in place Places where the map changes value too suddenly. So maybe we need to soften the map so that it has fewer harsh changes or less contrast between neighboring pixels. Therefore, I will duplicate the original image, rename it to map so we can remember which is which, and we'll apply some effects like a blur, a nice GPU accelerated blur perhaps, really blur it down nice and soft with the image here with a Gaussian blur. Now we can point the displacement map on the sharp image to the map, which we don't need to see, and make sure you select masks and effects to make sure that the effect is evaluating that map layer after the blur has happened to it. And look at this, it's feeling much more like 3D topography now as we observe the movement that we've already set up. Now, it might make sense that the brighter parts feel closer to us and the darker parts feel further away. That certainly makes sense if the bright and dark parts of the image correspond to what we feel are high and low, but what if we don't like that kind of relationship or the image actually has a lot of mid-tones or just similar tones that would make the image totally flat if we just took those changes in intensity? We can always just ask the effect that is looking at the map to use a different channel as the input. That's perfectly fine. But if you want to get more nuanced, we want to have tools to offset or remap or remix the values of our map, especially if simply swapping the channel isn't really helping get the specific look we're after. A great solution to this is Colorama. There are many, many value remapping effects to choose from, but this one really gives us every possible option. After applying the effect to the map layer, we want to pick which channel we want to use as input and how we want to remap that to some output. 
Let's choose luminance as our input, and let's output to a purely black and white gradient using the ramp gray preset. We can now shift the input by degrees to rack the values through, which is going to change that illusion of what feels close, what feels far, what's getting displaced more, what's being displaced less. But we do get this strange hard line here where black meets white values where the maximum and minimum values wrap around. That's because Colorama thinks of the values as a circle. So we may want to actually use the Solarize Gray preset, which makes both black and white values in this case black and 50% gray values are remapped to white. This makes for a nice smooth transition from the extremes as we rack that offset through. If you want more manual control, you can just add your own knots in, get wacky with it, and animating the phase shift here can make for some really lovely changes to the animation. I really recommend playing around with that to get some trippy, wavy things going on here. However, our journey is likely not done here. The final kind of basic adjustment you'll probably want to make is a curves or levels adjustment. I prefer levels in this case just because we can see the histogram and it makes dialing in those minimum and maximum values really simple. This will allow us to access that full range of displacement, making sure that we are going from totally white to totally black in our image. See here on the histogram where the data plateaus out. Let's just not count all of that in the image so we can have more darker and more lighter areas by pinching our start and end to where the data really starts to ramp up. And with those tweaks, let's watch back the results and enjoy some smoothly distorted images. Try remixing different images with different maps, play around with it. This is a case where having great source images is going to make for some really interesting results. Now, speaking of other images, it sounds like a good time to talk about this video sponsor, Yellow Images. Yellow Images is the number one marketplace for high quality premium mockups, creative fonts, images 360, and a creative store full of amazing graphical assets like brushes, presets, lettering, illustration patterns, textures, UI UX kits, and much, much more. You've already seen some examples from the Cell Paint Bundle, just one little example of the unique, interesting, high quality assets you'll find on there. I'll link to it directly in the description if that's of particular interest to you. If you are a heavy user of stock assets, if you have a regular need for this kind of thing, make sure that you get yourself a yellow ticket and enjoy deep members only discounts on everything they have to offer. It's like a Costco card, but for stock assets. And right now, for a limited time, they're offering 20% off everything they sell if you use promo code ECA2022. So please take advantage of that using the link in the description and enjoy that 20% off. So a big thank you to Yellow Images for helping to support the channel and for giving us those sweet, sweet discounts. Now we look at a similar application of maps. We can literally displace particles and then fly around them with a camera using layer maps in combination with some advanced particle systems. Here's my example using the third party plugin Plexus. The concept is that we want to take a persistent field of particles, color them with the image, and then push them vertically away from their origin to make a kind of topography that we can fly over with a camera. Easier said than done, maybe, but we know from phrasing our problem this way that the solution is probably maps. So let's begin with a solid to hold the plexus effect, and then we just apply that effect to the solid. Then we need to add in some particles from an emitter. That's the form that will say where and how many particles there are. In Plexus, we do this by selecting Add Geometry. Then we're going to select the Primitives object. Then we will define that more by choosing Cube, the default, then increasing the X and Y points to something high, maybe 500, and the Z points can come down to one, while also making the cube larger. Maybe we size it up to about 1,000 in each dimension. So now we have a heap of particles that are along the X, Y plane. Now we want to affect the system, so we're going to add an effector. That's what they call them in here. And we'll specifically use the color map effector. Then we can drop in our very cool image and make it invisible because we just need to use its data. And we'll point the effector to look at that specific layer. Right now you can see there's some color coming into the pixels, but it doesn't look exactly right. We are applying the map to vertices and it is working on the color of those vertices, but the plane that it's applying them to is all wrong. So in any map situation, we need to get that going the right way. And for us, that is the XY plane, as we said earlier when we made the geometry. And now we can see we have kind of a low res version of the original image. Now we must make these particles offset from that plane. So I'm going to first make a camera, make it a two node camera so I can orbit around and navigate a little bit easier. And I'll just use the camera tool to tilt our view and push in a little bit. You can toggle the camera tools around with the C key to cycle through them. 
And then I'm going to make a new map, a separate one. And it's not for changing color, it's going to change position. Make sure that that map plane is again set to that XY plane and that we're applying the change to the Z axis, which is the one that comes off of that plane. Now it looks a little bit wacky at the moment, but just look at that as we tweak the map amplitude up and down, you can see how these little motes, little particles are sliding away on that axis. So things are working. From here, it's all just tweaking up settings to get it to look exactly the way we want. I'm going to blur out the map a little using that Gaussian blur. We don't see that change right away because I must first go into the map layer drop down and say we want to look at the map after the effects are applied and boom, that topography is looking much better now. A little smoothing is usually going to help us out and if you wanted to massage the pixels in any way, you can drop all kinds of changes on here with effects like you saw in the first example, colorama, maybe we shift the channels, maybe we just apply a simple curves or levels to help give us some changes to this geometry. But hopefully it makes sense how we're changing that image and that is in turn changing the Z depth of all of these particles. Now to complete the piece to look exactly like the example, I'm going to turn on the depth of field for the camera and let Plexus respond to that in its render settings by turning that on as well. Then it's a matter of tweaking our focal distance, getting the actual angle right and getting everything just so in the camera settings. We might also apply some extra effectors like some noise specifically to the Z axis and that can add a little bit of variety, just a little bit of haze in there. But you might also introduce that noise to the actual map itself using maybe a noise HLS or a fractal on top of that. Then we'll just fly the camera over the scene in a nice controlled way by parenting it to a null, make that 3D and move that null around. It's going to feel like we're flying over a cool landscape. Now, certainly if we ended it here, that would be enough, but I have one more thing to show you that I hope will really hammer the concept of maps home for you. Let's take these maps over to Cinema 4D. I'm using the full license for Cinema 4D here, so if you're booting up the light version, you won't have access to the same tools that you're going to see me use here. So I have Cinema 4D open and I'm putting down a plane just so we can keep all of our examples fairly consistent. And just like we added many particles or points into the previous systems, we want the geometry here to have enough density in the polygons to respond to the details of whatever map we apply to it. So I'm going to put the subdivisions way up, maybe too high, but who's really counting. Now we're going to apply this displacer deformer and nesting that little buddy right under and inside the plane in the hierarchy. So it lives within the plane and acting upon it inside that displacer. I will add to the shading tab one of those very cool images we've been using, and this looks very pointy. So to fix that up, I'm just going to blur that out using the blur offset just to make it a little bit less distinct. I could also smooth that geometry down using a subdivision surface by placing that plane inside the subdivision surface, then playing with the subdivision surfaces number of subdivisions that's going to make things more or less smooth. And you might need to balance this out with more or less blurring of the actual map image. But as you can see, it's the same idea. We've got points and we're pushing them around using that map. The image data is pushing the points around. We could even modify how that deformation is being applied by bringing in something called a field. So I'm going to add a spherical field in here and you can see that displacement only happens inside that field. I could animate this up and down. That could be a pretty cool animation kind of taking shape around here. But if you're not satisfied with that method, may I show you the shader effector, which can become a deformer. Typically we would use effectors on large groups of things like clones, but we can also use them to deform. Just place them inside of geometry as you would any other deformer. Then under the deformer tab of the attributes manager, let's just turn on point because it is the points we want to deform. Then load in the image into the shader tab and dial in the attributes you are specifically interested in seeing change. We're going to go for the Z position in this case, and we have a pretty identical response. The big difference is that we can also apply the shader effector to groups. Here it is applied to an array of random shapes, moving them around based on that image input into that shader tab. And in this case, it makes kind of an interesting voxel art looking kind of thing. That's kind of nice. All these methods used maps to make similar things happen, but each software, each plugin, each method use slightly different language or slightly different methods to implement those layer maps. At the core of this idea, maps are just using data from an image to change pixels or objects or points in some abstracted way. And of course, this is only the barest little scratch at the surface of the concept, but I hope that it has helped to clarify or to open up the possibilities of what layer maps can do in your work. 
I'm always curious to see what you end up making with the things we talk about on this channel. So please share those with me. I'm at EC Abrams on Twitter and Instagram and Behance. So please tag me in posts, DM me things. I want to see what you're doing. If you have any questions about what you see on this channel, do let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you out. If you have any questions more generally or suggestions for future tutorials, please uh, get at me on any social medias. My DMs are open all over the place and definitely make sure that you are subscribed on here so you know when new tutorials are coming out. That'll do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Evan Abrams. Stay creative, be kind to each other, and I'll see you around the internet.